In TypeScript, enums are considered harmful by the wizard himself, Matt Pocock. Pocock, Pocock, Pococky. In TypeScript 5, enums have been upgraded, but they are still terrible. Mm. But in Rust, it's a completely different story. Rust enums are amazing. If you've never seen how they work, it will truly expand the way you think programming can be done. So let me show you how Rust enums work by using TypeScript as a guide. This is an enum in TypeScript. In TypeScript, you can create functions to take in enums. And in this case, when the color's red, we print red. When it's green, green. And when it's blue, blue. An obvious problem is if we add a new value to our enum. This switch statement will give you no indication that you are forgetting a case. And this is one of many issues that are brought up against enums. Now let's look at enums in Rust. First, they can be defined the same way they are in TypeScript. This looks pretty much identical. Working with enums, however, are a bit different. Here is an equivalent in behavior print color function in Rust. Let's look at this statement. It's called a match statement. It's a little bit different than a switch statement. Instead of comparing a value, it does pattern matching. Now, if color was red, we would print out red. And the same thing happens for blue and green. But what happens if we add yellow? This match statement will actually throw an error and you're unable to build your program because you are missing case yellow. There we go, we've added case yellow and our program's compiling again. Right now you're probably thinking, all right, well I guess Rust has the same enums as TypeScript, they look the same. They have about the same developer experience, just Rust is slightly better. This does not compel me to want to use Rust. Trust me, it gets much better. So let's just look at the Rust example for a moment. Something that TypeScript cannot do is that Rust can attach functions to enums effectively they become methods so we declare hey this is an implementation for color the functions called green part we take in a reference to the enum and we return out a boolean if the color is either yellow or blue which is what makes up green in the subtractive system we return true else for all other cases we return false let's add one more method that's called is green but this time we're using a different technique so you're probably familiar with how this function is defined but it's this that's kind of weird right what this does is that it takes a reference for self and pattern matches it but on an if statement. So only enums that are of type color green will return true. The rest will return false. These are both examples of pattern matching. It's one way to make working with enums significantly easier. Methods on enums make it so much more useful to work with, but that is only part of the reason why enums are so good in Rust. Let me show you one more example, and this is going to be amazing because it solves one of my biggest problems I have with TypeScript. All right, let's go back to TypeScript and see that we've defined a custom type with name and age. Also a union type item that has string number or custom. Here'd be the equivalent in Rust. First, we create a custom object with name and age. Then we have an enum item. Foo's the same as the string, bar's the same as the number, and baz is the same as the custom object. Let's create an item called foo, and it is a string. We can tell that it's string by doing type of foo, and we can log it out. Let's only look at Rust for a second. Look at how we create foo. First, we create it as an enum foo, and then we pass in a string. We can pattern match out that string again by using foo and pattern matching item foo with a subtype s. Now this s is the value of the subtype that was passed in. And in our case, that is a string. And now we can print out hello easily. We could do the same operation with bar and even the same operation with baz and the custom struct. Here's an example using baz. Here we're pattern matching baz and we get access to custom. And here we can print it out. Let's create equivalent methods in both TypeScript and Rust. Both in TypeScript and Rust, we take in a list of items and we add to that list an item with the number subtype. In the case of TypeScript, it's just 69. But in the case of Rust, it's item bar 69. Remember, these two are equivalent in values. Let's create a list of strings in both languages. Next, let's call append in both languages. In TypeScript, we can pass in a list of strings to anything that takes a list of items. That is because a list of strings, in some sense, is equivalent to a list of items. But a list of items is not equivalent to a list of strings. You can imagine that every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Therefore, a list of strings now will contain a number when you call append. Now for Rust, this won't work. And the reason being is this is a list of strings. This requires a list of items. They are different. Rust fundamentally sees them as different types. That's pretty cool, right? Like not only does it help prevent any weird kind of bugs when it comes to union types, it also allows you to have these heterogeneous lists where you can have multiple types in there, but you get to define exactly which types you want. That has to blow your mind. Enums are so useful, they're even used in replacing null and undefined and how error handling works in Rust. Here is the option and result type. Of course, the option represents undefined slash null or some value. A result represents a value or an error. They use generic so they can be whatever type you need them to be. Something super cool that Rust does that TypeScript doesn't. When you call a function, you know what it returns. Whereas with TypeScript, does this thing throw an error? Do you need to try catch? 
you better handle undefined. Of course, TypeScript has made this a lot better, but nonetheless, you can still run into these situations. Whereas with Rust, it comes back as an option if it's undefined. It comes back as a result if there could be an error. And you can even have things like result with a value of option. And this is one thing I really appreciate about Rust, which is when you're working with Rust, every function you're calling, you know the exact return type and how it behaves. So if this function were to error, the function above would know that this function could err and would have to handle it or pass it to the next function. Whereas in TypeScript, does this function even know that you could throw an error? Who handles the error? Does anybody handle the error? Hopefully you see why enums are amazing in Rust and hopefully you appreciated this little presentation that we went on. If you like this, hey, please press the like button already. Subscribe to the channel. The name is the Primogen.